This is the first time that I've had a man that solves my problems for me. In the past, I've always been mom. I've always been to the mom with the guy with mommy issues. I didn't realize this, but I am now finally discovering this. I was on the phone the other day with this guy. Said in passing, oh, I need a new spatula. You know, this one's old, this one's dirty. Got along with our two hour conversation. I go to his house. This man presents me with two new spatulas <laughs> for something that I said within a two second time span. This man just solved my issue. And what better way to say I love you than with a gift of a spatula? Yeah, it's almost as if self-respecting men are natural born problem solvers and want to make your life easier. It's what we do, woman. And if we're being perfectly honest, I can't say I'm surprised that this is a shock to you. But what's funny to me is that you mentioned how you needed a spatula and a few days later when you go over to this dude's house, you clearly never got around to buying those spatulas yourself. Which just begs the question, if that guy hadn't bought you a pair of spatulas, how long would it have taken you to get replacements on your own? And sub question, if you ran out of industrial grade makeup, how long would it take for you to buy more of that? There really isn't any need to provide any further context, woman. We already know the answer to both questions. Again, in passing, I mentioned, oh, I need quarters for laundry because my laundry room doesn't take carts till it takes quarters. The next time I come to his house, he presents me with $40 in quarters. Just take it, baby girl. Don't, don't give me anything. Just take it. Take the quarters. These are the smallest things. I mean, $40 is a lot. The smallest things, you know how much of a difference they made to me? Congratulations! Okay, things are starting to get a little interesting here. Well, not because of her. Rest assured, we'll get back to her in just a second. But I cannot figure out for the life of me if this dude is genuinely being a straight-up guy, showing signs of being a simp, or if he's unlocked the cheat code for how to be the world's cheapest, shall we say, glucose papa, if you'll indulge the algorithm. Now, normally, I would be inclined to believe that this guy would be halfway decent if it wasn't for the fact that he gave her 40 bucks and quarters and called her a baby girl. I'm also thinking this way because he only gives her these things when she goes over to his house but then again the things are also kind of practical so i gotta give this dude props because he's created one of the ultimate mysteries here what do you think guys what is this dude i can't tell this is hard i am in a pickle i told this man weeks ago oh i always used to get flowers for my house but i'm too busy now he's like what what flowers do you like what are your favorite flowers i was like oh red or white roses I told him I was stressed the other day. Remember, this was weeks ago. I go to his house. Oh, I got you roses because I figured you were stressed. You won't be able to get them for the house for a while. Oh. <laughs> like, when someone can just solve my issues without me, like, asking them or hinting or really poking at them to do so. Wow. What a stress relief. I've never had this. This is... We can have this. This is like a thing. I didn't know. I didn't know that I can be taken care of that I didn't need to do the taking caring of. I, I didn't know this. Oh, come on! And you blew it. No, woman, that's not how it works. You mentioned a few things to him that were inconveniencing you without the intention of him doing anything. Now, all of a sudden, your problems are his to solve? You mentioned all of these things in passing, which isn't surprising. You're a modern woman. That passes for communication in your eyes. So now you've already set the precedent that whenever you mention something, no matter how vague, he now has to pick it up and know exactly what to do in response. And if he doesn't, then it's because he's not a good listener and no better than any of the tens of dudes you slept with and that's not how a woman in a serious relationship thinks that's more in line with a cat lady in training it's like one of the things i wish i knew before my first relationship i think that no one tells you that would have helped me a lot if i knew them sooner so i'm gonna help you guys out the first a big tip i have is to make sure that you have your own life going on that is so separate from the person you're dating. Do not combine it. Do not start to cancel your plans. See this person more. Have your schedule and stick to it. What I used to do and what I see a lot of girls do is get really caught up in liking someone and then you abandon your entire schedule in your life just for this one person. And when you do that, you become so much less yourself because you're giving yourself to this one person. I've literally seen girls ruin their friendships over this, ruin their goals. Stick to who you are, even if you're dating someone, okay? A relationship should not take over your entire life. We ought to just videotape this, play it back and slow motion. 
Well, there you are, Ethel. I was gonna wonder where you went, but then I realized I had some paint I had to go watch dry instead. So I see that you're still mainlining dangerous amounts of caffeine, I see. Well, it's good to see you. You are still terrifying. Now, I would be inclined to agree that both parties should keep some form of autonomy in the relationship, but lest we forget, Ethel, you're the same woman who openly brags about keeping men in the friend zone in order to earn their way into a relationship with you. Now, don't forget, I own my own business, so I keep my own receipts for tax purposes. I filed this one under H for hypocrite. If you like a guy, the absolute best thing you can do is friend zone him. But the problem with liking someone is that you give them too much credit before they even prove themselves to you. You get to see if they're persistent enough to try to get out of the friend zone. So in your stimulant-addled mind, a woman should have some freedom in the relationship, but the guy is fair game to manipulate him in an attempt to change him and to be worthy of your... How can I put this delicately? Frightfully energetic presence. This next one's gonna sound a little weird, but do not be afraid to break up. I see so many people who are so comfortable in their relationships, even though the person they're with does not make them fully happy. Or they used to make them fully happy, and now they don't, and they just don't want to break up because they're comfortable. There is so much better out there for you if you are unhappy in your relationship. Relationship. I know that breaking up like seems dramatic and it seems like a big deal. But if the person you're with stops meeting your standards, one of two things will happen if you break up. Number one, they will knock some sense into them and get better. Or that's not your person. And if they're willing to give up, goodbye. Goodbye. Don't be afraid to break up with someone, okay? Jesus, she is terrifying. Oh, Ethel, you goofy little pelican. Relationships aren't about happiness. They're about trust and respect. The happiness and love are merely a byproduct. It's not the man's responsibility to make you fully happy, whatever that means. It's a concept that you invented in your happy juice affected mind to justify an irresponsible sense of hypergamy. Ethel, if you feel compelled to threaten a man with a breakup just to see if he'll step up, then that's a dastardly form of manipulation, and it's just plain mean. If two people are comfortable in a relationship, what business of it is yours to give that kind of terrible advice, Ethel. I think you need to lay off the happy juice you're doom clutching right there. It looks like it's changing your brain chemistry. Just leave couples alone to figure out their own stuff. Their full happiness is none of your concern. Just because you are dating someone does not mean we're not going to date ourselves too. I feel like it's a huge thing when you're single to be like, date yourself, take yourself on dates. No, we do that even when we're dating other people. At the end of the day, you cannot rely on anyone to give yourself the love that you know you deserve. You need to be giving that to yourself all the time. Okay, that's my rant. Let me know if we want a part two. I'll make another one. I love you, Bestie Boo. Stay safe out there. Mwah. Lady, you're scaring us. <laughs> You just contradicted yourself, Ethel. How is it that a relationship needs to make you fully happy, which is apparently the man's responsibility, but you're supposed to date yourself to somehow love yourself in a way that the man can't, which means that if you're not fully happy, then that's your own fault. Besides, dating yourself sounds tedious. What does that even look like? When I see it in my mind, I see you sitting alone at a restaurant with a table for two, you start a conversation, then get up to switch seats, make a response, and then continue to switch seats until all of the food has been consumed, and then you get into an argument about who's paying for the bill and it gets to the point where you end up breaking up with yourself and then re-downloading the dating apps as revenge to find yourself a man in an attempt to find full happiness and even though that sounds a little poetic that doesn't sound like a good plan to me ethel you blew it Capish. i don't want to say love is a lie but the whole idea of love has been weaponized against women in order to get us to provide labor for free or without any kind of recognition or acknowledgement like if someone's a chef and they cook food for people that's a job and they're compensated for it and they're appreciated for it if someone is a nanny and they take care of children that's a job and they're compensated for and appreciated for it if someone is a SW or even a mistress, they're usually compensated and appreciated for it. But when you become a wife, when you become a mother, you are not compensated or appreciated for any of these things. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? Yeah, that's where you're wrong, woman. Being a wife is not a job. It's not a career. It is a duty. It always has been. You see, marriage was never supposed to be about love. It's about loyalty. Both parties swear oaths to stay with this person forever. They stayed loyal and faithful and honored those vows. And when you swear a vow, it's your duty to uphold them. And traditionally speaking, the woman's duty was to take care of the home as well as provide peace and comfort to her man. And that compensation you prattle on about comes in the form of the husband's 
duties of providing you with a home, protection, and leadership. It's a symbiotic relationship, not a series of careers. Nothing has been weaponized against you, woman. These are meaningless political talking points you use to justify taking more from a man and providing nothing but grief in return. And that's something more along the lines of what a parasite does. I don't have a good relationship with my mother. I'm shocked. And the older I've gotten, the more I'm like, oh, okay. Even though I don't think she was a very good mother, it makes a lot of sense why she wasn't a good mother. Because what a thankless job for 98% of women who occupy it. We're supposed to do it all with a smile on our face because love, because you love your children. That's why you take care of them, because you love your husband. That's why you married him. That's why you feed him. That's why you pick up after him. That's why you forgive him. That's why you're romantic with him, even if you don't feel like being romantic with him. Because he has needs and you love him and it's your job to fulfill them. It's your job to bend over backwards for your husband and your children because you love them and that's your reward. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. Okay, what exactly are you saying, lady? That you deserve a paycheck? All right, fair enough. Let's go there. You're hired. You are officially receiving financial compensation from your husband. Now, remember, if you're getting paid to do this, you are now going to be required to do your duties, not under an oath, but under terms of employment. So now you are contractually obligated to cook, clean, take care of the kids, as well as your man's bedroom needs, even when you don't want to. You have to do it without complaint and without any form of thanks. The money is now your recognition. And because he's your employer, he's your boss. So keep in mind, if you want to keep that regular paycheck, you better cook amazing dinners, keep the children well behaved, and be enthusiastic in the bedroom whenever he wants. Because if you don't, he holds the right to fire you and replace you with someone who will. If you date men, it's supposed to be because you're trying to find love. Any other reason would be shallow, and you're a shallow, vapid bitch if you have any other intention or reason to want to date a man. Men, on the other hand, well, they have to ease into love. They're not so prone to love. They're visual creatures. They want someone who's super young. They want someone who's super hot. You know, love isn't so much their thing. Sure, they love their children, but not like a mother could love their children. Sure, they love their wives, but not like a woman loves a man. You see how love implicates women and lets men off the hook. Now, again, I'm not saying love doesn't exist, but kind of like religion, it started off being a quintessential part of being a human being and a very real thing. And it was hijacked and weaponized against the people that it was made to oppress. <laughs> <laughs> all right just because you binge watch reality tv shows about rich people doesn't mean you know a thing about men men actually do feel emotions we just experience them differently and don't need to express them the same way that you do it's funny how chromosomes and brain chemistry will do that to somebody now if anybody weaponized the concept of love it was you but you played yourself you argue that love is oppressing women so when you don't feel that love you go through the arduous task of divorce to be free of those oppressive shackles so now that you're no longer oppressed you're now free to cook clean and take care of the kids all while working full-time and with zero financial physical or emotional support from your ex and you get to do all of this with literally zero recognition from anybody and yet through all of this you will still be incapable of tasting that delicious irony because the only thing you are capable of tasting is pure bitterness oh! And that's going to do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents. And as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, share this video. Let's get the word out and give the good old fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Keep on lifting them weights and eating them steaks, gentlemen and gents. And until next time, peace out, homies.